Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're anything like me, then as you grew up, you got to work on cars, you got to see a lot of mechanical things, but surprisingly, I've never actually owned a vehicle with a clutch before. So although I know a lot about what their purpose is and what they're supposed to do, I'd actually never gotten a chance to take one apart and learn what the components were. So I'd heard people talking about things like throwout bearings, pressure plates, those kind of things, but I never really understood how they all connected together. Until recently, when I was helping somebody to take apart one and, and diagnose one that had a lot of noise to it. And so I thought that was a great opportunity to compare one that was broken to one that was whole and see what the difference is. So I'm going to focus only on one particular part. And in this case, it was the part of interaction that went bad with this particular, with this particular clutch system. There's a lot of different parts of a clutch, and I'm not going to go into all of those here, but just one really critical one. And that piece that I want to talk about is called the throwout bearing. So a throwout bearing, one that's perfectly working, in fact, this one is brand new, a throwout bearing has an, one end that connects to a piece called a pressure plate. Now this pressure plate has a whole bunch of springs on it, and those springs, as the name implies, provide pressure. But when you have a, this throwout bearing connecting to the pressure plate, as you step on your clutch pedal, a hydraulic arm, like a big fork, presses on this throwout bearing. Now they're mounted sideways, so as it presses on this throwout bearing, it pushes with a lot of force. Now the inside of this is connected to the transmission, so it's a shaft that's rotating. So the inside of this throwout bearing must be rotating while the outside piece stays stationary. Now, if it was spinning, if that outside piece was spinning, imagine what that would sound like with this metal rubbing across those forks. That would be a very loud, annoying noise. So instead, the outside of this bearing stays steady, and as we apply pressure with that hydraulic fork from the pedal, it stays steady. The inside of the shaft can still rotate while the force is applied on the outside. Now, with those forks, they do not apply pressure exactly perpendicular to the shaft that, or parallel to the shaft. So if they're not applying force perfectly and you're pressing on the clutch a lot or the clutch is just old and starting to wear out, then that force is slightly pressing to the side as well as pushing directly parallel on the bearing. So what that ends up with is where inside the bearing. Now, if you've ever heard a bearing that's gone bad, it starts to develop kind of a grinding noise because the inside, those nice smooth rotating balls inside are no longer smoothly rotating. So here's an example of what one would sound like when it's going bad. Compare that sound to the brand new one, no sound at all. So if you wonder what does a clutch sound like when it's starting to go bad, imagine applying force with a pedal on something that's rotating much faster than I can and listen to that sound. Now in this particular case, there was an extra little bit of a symptom and that symptom was when you applied a little bit of force, there was a really loud noise, but if you pressed even harder, the noise went away. Well, that seems odd. You can't just apply more force and make the bearing start working again, but here's what was going on. This pressure plate, which off of a truck is much bigger. This pressure plate, as you can see, there is a lot of wear right on the edges of those forks, right here in the middle. So what was happening was, as the pedal was being pressed, not hard, but gently, this bearing that was worn out was not free spinning. The whole thing was spinning around the axle. And as it connected with those springs, it continued to spin both the inside and the outside. And that outside spinning was grinding on those forks or on those teeth, creating a really loud noise. But if you pressed even harder, added more force to this bearing, all of a sudden it would start behaving more like a bearing again. Yeah, there was some grinding noise, but it was just due to the bearing inside. The outside would be pressing hard enough against those springs that the outside would stop and the inside would still be spinning again, like a real clutch is supposed to. So if you pressed harder on the pedal, that noise would disappear. It did not mean that the problem was solved though. This bearing was still very bad. 
So it required a replacement of the bearing and the pressure plate and the entire clutch assembly at the same time as well. But that noise, especially one that shows up and then goes away when you apply more force is due to that rotation. When we only apply a little bit of force of the bearing against those spring teeth, it continues spinning and rubbing on those spring teeth. A Little bit more force and all of a sudden now the outside stops and the inside can still spin. Now there's also some evidence when I said that that fork does not press perpendicular exactly to the pressure plate. You can actually see that once again on this pressure plate by that wear pattern inside right here where you can see that shiny metal that indicates the, the metal is actually rubbing. That is not perfectly round in the center. Some of those forks on that spring are actually worn off while on the other side they are not. That means that that bearing was not being pressed straight onto there. Now that's just a fact of physics. We can't get away from that. But we do know that once that bearing begins rubbing and goes bad and we hear that noise, it's time to replace it. So the parts that are rubbing inside the transmit or inside that clutch, this is a good candidate of what you might diagnose when you hear that noise is that throw out bearing, that noise that comes from the bearing itself, as well as that noise that comes from a stuck bearing rubbing on the metal of the pressure plate that causes that noise. So I hope this one has been a little bit interesting to you. A little bit of just a short tidbit. It's not all about how clutches work and all about what they do, but I just thought that one was really interesting for me having never seen one before, but then getting to see one in action, one that's broken even better and getting to see why it doesn't work. I always love mechanical assemblies and especially if they're in a vehicle, they're always fun to take a look at. So I hope this helps. And if you have any suggestions for future things, just drop them in the comments and hope to see you again sometime soon. Bye.